thank you. Um, all right, so let's dive right in. Some background information. All mammals sleep. Another fact, different species sleep different amounts per day. So here I have plotted over the course of a 24-hour day how much um, sleep each of these different species gets. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of variation here. That leads naturally to the question, why is that? And then more broadly, why do mammals sleep at all? My hypothesis begins from a third fact, and that is that all animals deal with stress all the time. But most stressors are temporary. We get a signal from something like a predator, we deal with it, and one way or another, it goes away. <laughs> Life, by definition, basically, is the sum of all these stresses. But there's something missing from this picture, and it's a stressor that we all share, um, that uh, we are constantly exposed to, and that is absolutely intolerable 24 hours a day. And that's you. <laughs> Our thoughts and our feelings and definitely our personalities cannot be tolerated 24 hours a day. <laughs> so my hypothesis is that sleep evolved as a mechanism to remove us from these stressors that we cannot otherwise escape from, our lives and ourselves. To further elucidate this hypothesis, I created a metric called basic satisfaction, which is basically how satisfied an organism is with its life. So here's my equation, um, where we calculate basic satisfaction as the sum of all our stressors, and each one is weighted by how we feel about that stressor. So when we look back at this graph of variation in how much animals sleep, we're actually seeing variation in how satisfied an organism is <laughs> with its life. And this ranges from self-acceptance in animals that do not have to sleep very much to basically self-loathing in animals that have to allocate most of their day to being unconscious. Now, without funding or grad students to do the work, um, it's very difficult to measure and quantify how an animal actually feels about these stressors, but it's relatively easy to look at the primary components of basic satisfaction in a comparative manner, and we get some pretty compelling preliminary data. For example, if you look at habitat, our high basic satisfaction animals, elephants and giraffes, live in beautiful grassland savannas. And we can compare that to our low basic satisfaction animals, <laughs> opossums and brown bats, which live in caves and garbage cans. <laughs> Regarding diet, we have organic vegetation and fresh seafood, and we compare that to bugs and, not surprisingly, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> Social structure, both elephants and giraffes live in multi-generational family units. We compare that to bats, who have hundreds, sometimes millions of roommates who defecate directly on the floor, <laughs> and possums, and possums who are forced to carry toddlers around with them wherever they go. <laughs> Drafts are adorned in trendy spots, indicating high self-esteem, whereas possums wear loose-fitting neutrals, perhaps indicating low self-esteem. <laughs> Public perception is also important. are frequently associated with children and fun, whereas our low basic satisfaction animals are frequently associated with things like disease, death, sin, and apparently arson. The offspring of giraffes and elephants are precocial and adorable. The offspring of bats and possums are neither of those two things. is worth a thousand words, so we don't need to sully it with, um, but we can compare that to brown bats, which have two phases in their reproductive cycle. The first phase, the active phase, is actually just like a crazy sex party while they will mate with anything. And I am positing today that you can't feel too good about your life if you're willing to try to make a baby with the wrong species. Um, 
And the second phase is actually a felony in our human courts of law, so I'm not going to describe it in this family-friendly event, but if you must know, I direct you to the internet. <laughs> All right, finally, um, the ultimate sleeper is the koala. They sleep up to 22 hours per day, and I thought initially that this would just punch a big hole in my hypothesis because they're perceived very positively, and they live in nice eucalyptus forests. Um, however, when you dig into their biology a little deeper, you get some pretty dark stuff. Uh, <laughs> you probably know that they eat eucalyptus, but you may not know that eucalyptus is actually toxic. And in order to eat eucalyptus and not die, the mothers always feed the babies poop. Their poop. So their diet is exclusively poison and poop. <laughs> and, and when it comes to reproduction, the males have a bifurcating penis, and the females have three vaginas and two uteruses. And now, before all you guys out there are like, ooh, it'd be awesome to have two penises, it's actually more like one penis that's just been slit in half. <laughs> and, um, and I am confident that there's not a woman in here who thinks her basic satisfaction would increase with two uteruses. <laughs> three vaginas, maybe, but two uteruses, scientifically All right, so going back to my original research question, why do mammals sleep, I think I have proven, and I'm a scientist, so I don't use that word lightly, I think I have proven <laughs> that it all comes down to BS, so. Yeah.